in God's house. And I am so glad that the Lord has given me the ability and the sound mind to come to his house today. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of people who don't don't realize the value of serving God, coming to God's house. A lot of people don't don't realize how close we are to the end time. Amen. And the Bible says, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Today we're going to talk about uh, a topic of praise and worship. Uh, the title of the lesson is God's Word for Today about Praise and Worship. And we're going to um, read three texts. First is John 4.24, and then we're going to go to Psalm 100, and then finally Psalm 150. And uh, most everyone understands Psalms 150 about being, uh, it is the highlight of, of the Psalms in terms of praising the Lord. But let's turn first to John chapter 4, verse 24. Anybody ever had a, knew you had a shout coming on? I got a shout coming on. I had a sneeze coming on, but I think I, I think it'll be all right. But if I have to, it'll it'll be all right. There's a good distance between us. It's it's dust. I'm not sick. So. Amen. John 4:24. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him. How? In spirit and in truth. There's two ways to worship God, in spirit and in truth. Then let's go to Psalm 100. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Let's read this together. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. That's one of my favorite psalms. And um, finally, we're going to read Psalms 150, the 150th psalm. I'm going to do something a little different as soon as we read this. I'm going to go back to the original language. Psalm 150. Let's read it together. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Now I wrote uh, in my Bible some comments about this 150th Psalm, a call to praise, a call to praise who? Yah. Y-A-H, or J-A-H, who's Yah, Yah is the Lord, that's his name. In the Old Testament it says, uh, my name's Yah. And so where do we praise him? We praise him in his sanctuary. We praise him in the firmament of his power. Why? Because of his mighty acts and according to his excellent grace. How? And then it goes on to say how we should with the sound of the trumpet, with the psaltery harp, so forth. But in verse 3, uh, it tells us the who's. 
who should praise him and in what way. Verse 3 says, play, uh, praise him with the sound of the trumpet, which is the shofar. Now who, well, let's go way back in time in Judaism, who would blow the shofar? Hmm? All right, the Levitical priest would blow the shofar. So the Levitical priest sure should be praising the Lord. Now the harp and the lyre, the psaltery and harp, uh, those were played by Levitical musicians. They had musicians, they had singers, they had priests. So who should praise the Lord? Uh, the musicians should. You know something? Some of y'all are musicians. Some of you have been involved in ministry. And uh, it is so easy, and this is the pitfall, to where you're just doing a function. I catch myself up here playing the organ and just, I'm sitting there, I'm doing what I've done for 50 something years, I'm zoned out and I'm no longer praising him on the organ. I'm just doing a function, I'm doing what I've done for a long time and I snap out of it. I says, hey, what are you doing? You're at church. You're sitting there like an owl on a fence. Let's get with it, Wayne. And I have to start praising the Lord. Amen. All right, verse 4. Now, who else should praise him and how? It talks about the drum and the dance and the strings. Those were things that common people played. So common people ought to praise the Lord. Verse 5, on the melodic symbols, who did that? The Le Levite singers, the choir, all had melodic symbols, and they would, they would praise the Lord. So the choir ought to be praising the Lord, too. That'd be a good idea. And then what about the clanging symbols? The common people did that. And then he goes one more step in verse 6, and he says... You know what? We've got a lot of the Levites, the singers, the musicians, the priests, the workers, the people that are involved in the nuts and the bolts of, of, of the church activity. But you know what? Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. If you have breath, then it's your obligation to praise the Lord. Can I hear an amen? amen. Now, I heard that great experience testimony, Sister Dalal. It gave me goosebumps. As soon as you finished your testimony, Sister Walker said, Hallelujah! Right after that. And uh, the thought came to me that uh, we are so integrated with eternity, with eternity past, with eternity future. We are, we are in touch right now, and we were at that moment, with those in heaven and those in earth and <laughs> under the earth. That's, that's three stratas. There is one word that is an ancient original word that is a universal word. It, it is universal both in uh, every age of the existence of human, humankind on the face of the earth, the, created, the, the, the creation of earth. And it is universal for every language in every dialect that has ever been and ever will be on the earth. And it goes way into eternity. And that is the word, hallelujah. The most ancient word on your tongue, the most eternal word on your tongue and in your vocabulary is the word, hallelujah. And I'm going to read the 150th Psalm in the original language. 
And this is what David would have said pretty much. I would be kind of like if I was going to a foreign country and I knew half a dozen words and I tried, and it, 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 you know, it would be a little bit off, right? Um, I, I, uh, it's like I saw a sign down in Mexico that says, we speak perfect broken English here. <laughs> right? How's my Puerto Rican Spanish, sister? It's not so good, is it? No, no bueno. So that's my name, Wayno. Well, mom, that's right. <laughs> Praise God. Psalm 150, and uh, it's titled Hallelujah. Mizmor Kufnun, Hallelujah. Let me at first explain one word that's, that's uh, repeated over and over. It's Hallel. Hallel is a Hebrew word which means praise. Hallel. Now, when you put Lu on the end, Hallelu, that means praise you. Hallelu. That is a command, praise you. That's a command. Now, the name of God is, he said it was in the Old Testament, Yah. There is, uh, and that's interpreted, the Lord, J-A-H-Y-A-H. Uh, the, the name of, uh, of God, his, his covenant name, um, has, always, uh, has always been, there's a, what they call the, uh, the tetragrammaton. It's four letters, four Hebrew letters. It's Yud, He, Vav, He, which is a condensation of, the, of a, a greater word that the Hebrews stopped saying because they said it's taken the name of the Lord in vain, so they stopped saying it. So a lot of things have been lost over, the, over time. But uh, when you see in your, your King James Bible, uh, you'll see the Lord, the word Lord, all uppercase letters, in the Hebrew text, that is the tetragrammaton. That is uh, what now they, they interpret as Yahweh, Yahweh, or Yehovah, Yehovah, Jehovah. All right, now, when you see in the, in the uh, Old Testament, if you got a capital L or small l in small lowercase l-o-r-d, uh, that's usually Adonai, but they also uh, will, when they see the, the four letters, Yud, He, Vav, He, Yehovah, or Yahweh, sometimes they'll say Adonai, you'll see that in text, or nowadays, most of the Hebrews uh, say Hashem. Hashem simply means the name, and so they'll say Hashem. Um, but uh, let's go on with Psalm 150. Verse 1, put the text, uh, uh, media people, put verse 1 up there. Thanks. Follow along with me. All right, here we go. Praise ye the Lord, which I already said hallelujah. Verse 1, hallelujah, El. praise God, El is God. Hallelujah, El Bekadeshu. Praise God in his sanctuary. Kadeshu is an interesting word. Uh, uh, kadosha is a word for holy or holiness. And uh, Kadoshim are holy people. So his sanctuary is a place of holiness. And then the next phrase, hallelujah, oh, oh, I forgot one more bit in Hebrew. Um, he is who, she is he. Now, what are you saying? Okay, the Hebrew word for he or him is who. So when you read this, they're not saying uh, praise him. They're saying hallelujah, who, hallelujah, you praise who, him, okay? Can you say that, he is she? No. 
He is who, she is he. <laughs> he is who, all right, or him is who. Hallelujah. Berkia Uzo, in the firmament of his power. Verse two. Hallelujah. Bigborotav, for his mighty acts. Hallelujah. Praise him. Kerob Gudlo, according to his excellent greatness. Verse three. Hallelujah. Praise him. Beteka Shofar. Beteka with the sound Shofar of the trumpet. Uh, I think everybody knows what a Shofar is. Don't be getting Roman on us. Don't, don't, don't be visualizing some silver or brass trumpet with maybe valves and a big horn. Sorry, this came off the head of a ram. A shofar. Now, did we just tear down your mental image and put up another one? That's how. Don't praise him with something man-made with the sound. Praise him with something that God created. Amen. Y'all are so quiet. Hallelujah. Beteka shofar. Hallelujah. Praise him. Benebel with the psaltery. Vekanor and harp. Verse 4. Hallelujah. Betop umahol. Betop is with the tambourine. Umahol is with the dance. Hallelujah. You praise him. Umahol with the dance. Sounds like a command to me. Say, I'm not a dancer. Well, you know something? There's this fella. Y'all won't be able to see this. But I, he, used, he didn't used to run around the church and stuff and, and get up and dance and cut a step. But he used to go like this. He'd just be sitting down. He was just sitting down. His feet were just to go. And he was just, his feet were just, he was sitting down and he was just to dancing. Amen. And I know sometimes you get the dance in your feet too. Amen. Amen. That's right. They're dancing, not moving much, but they're dancing. Right, Brother Troy? Years ago, Brother Kilgore's church, sitting over there by Sister Hanson, was old Sister Davis. And, uh, and there, there, we, we had some great saints, great saints, back in Old Life Tabernacle. But uh, um, Brother O.S. Davis gave us a lot of good songs. He wrote my name way up in glory. He saved my soul from sin and shame. I never shall forget the day the blessed Savior wrote my name. But she would be sitting there in that pew right in front of Sister Hanson. And the Spirit would come down and she would just get up. She was old, old. She'd get up like this. She'd sit up and boy and Every eye was on her, and she would go like this. And I mean, tell you, she was cutting a step. And she would walk back, some, and the church went up in smoke when they saw that. Because there had to be a powerful Holy Ghost move when she'd do that. And she'd walk four or five pews. She'd go back and sit down. And I'm telling you what, she was praising the Lord in the dance. Amen. And it's like Brother Alan Ock said, he says, if you're waiting for more, he says, I'm wide open. <laughs> he says, I'm wide open. Amen. And so the young people, they can really jump high and they can really cut a step. And, and then otherwise, sometimes not so much. But praise God. But the Lord knows our heart. Amen. David. The dance is one way. We'll get into this later if we have time. But... Uh, David showed us it's okay for even a king to dance. Where am I? Amen. Praise Tim. Uh, okay. Hallelujah. Verse 4, the second half. Hallelujah. Benimin with string instruments. The uga and organs. Verse 5. Hallelujah. Basilis say. 
Sama. Praise him on the symbols, on the loud, on the loud symbols. Hallelujah, Basilice. Terua on the high sounding symbols. And then verse 6. Kol Hanesama. Let everything is interpreted that hath breath. But kol means all. And Hanesama means living souls. Let all living souls. Tehalel. Praise Yah, the Lord. And then finally, Hallelujah. Let's everybody say Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So maybe that has new light and a different meaning. But I thank God for one word I won't have to learn when I get on the other side. I will already have known it, and it will be just second nature to me to say Hallelujah even in my new body. Praise God. God is great. He's to be worshipped. It's so important to worship God for who he is and what he has done. There are so many scriptures in the Old Testament and the New Testament that point back to Genesis chapter 1, to the creation. And that puts God at the very beginning. Everything that uh, the scripture builds a foundation upon is back in Genesis 1 in the beginning. As a matter of fact, uh, the Hebrews say their language, the, the fundamental uh, words, each word and each character of their alphabet or, uh, or alphabet and each word, fundamental word, touches something in the original creation. It goes back to that time. Something that God created, and that creates all the, uh, all the or, or is the foundation for all of the letters and all of the words. The, uh, the reason why we praise God, one of the reasons is for all of the things he has done for all things he's created. You know, I find myself worrying about a lot of things that he's already taken care of. And a lot of things he told me not to worry about. And, and I have to agree with, uh, with your father, Sister Walker. I'm just, a lot of times, I'm just flat outright sinning, worrying about it. And, it, and, and to, be, to feel insecure and insufficient is such an insult to God based on all the things he's done in the past. So here I am worrying about, oh no, I'm gonna lose my job. Oh no, I'm, I'm, this is gonna happen and that's gonna happen and oh no, I'm, I'm not gonna have enough, enough money to take, I'm, it's insufficient and I'm lacking funds. Oh no, what am I gonna do? But you know, I have never once prayed for or worried about Oh, God, please, Jesus, please let the sun come up today, Lord. Let it warm the earth, God. Otherwise, I'm going to freeze to death and all the vegetation is going to die and the oceans are going to freeze. I've never prayed that of you. No. I got a long way to go in faith. Right? Amen? Right, is everybody still with me? Yeah. All right. Amen. Am I keeping you awake? Okay, I appreciate that. Hallelujah. Mm, Hallelujah means praise him, Yah, the Lord. The, uh, the creation, when we look at it and all the created things, it just, when we really contemplate on it, and, and really get deep into it, it strikes such awe in us. And that's what it's supposed to do. We're just, we're just bedazzled. We're just taken back in awe of all the things God has done. If you ever study like any part of his creation, like I like studying the solar system, 
But sometimes just look at a look at a flower or look at a cat or study a squirrel or an ant or the high or the hydronic cycle of how the rain last week I was flying and and I was up above the clouds and I was thinking about how God carries water from a long way and brings it to place where there's no water and puts water. It's amazing what all he does. Amen. Amen. And this, where did this all come from? This desire to worship, it comes from God. He put that in us. We all have a desire to worship something higher than us. But there's only one God and there's only one whom we should worship and that is God. And if we worship anything other than God, the creator, then that's called idolatry. We're worshiping an idol. Now, what's an idol? Usually an idol is, well, I'll just use a little uh, bottle of water. And it's kind of, kind of dumb. Idolat idolatry is kind of dumb. It really is. You know, civilized, intelligent people. I, I can't understand. How did Israel... After seeing the Red Sea, the water piled up and they walking across and then Pharaoh and his army gets all in the middle of it and then God lets it come down on them and, they, and they're too far from either shore and, and, and to see all those miracles like that and then get out there and manna on the ground. Oh man, that, and that's another, another study, study about manna, how that worked. Okay, and then they go out with with the heathen neighbors next door and they got them a little piece of stone that they cast or they carved or they got a little piece of wood. Isaiah's just hee-haw laughing on him. He says, look at that people over there. There's a tree. It's just a tree. That's all it is, a tree. Everybody knows a tree is. And, and they cut a limb off. He says, and then, and then, and then they, they cut some off and they uh, build a chair out of it or a table. And then they cut another limb off and then... They, they chop it up, split it, and put it in the oven and set it on fire, and they cook the bread with it. And then they cut another limb off, and uh, they, they make a walking stick out of it. And then they cut another limb off and carve it all up and say, these be the gods that deliver us. And, we'll be, <laughs> and he's laughing at them. And do you know what? Anything that has to be propped up is no god at all. Dagon, for example. They put the Ark of God right in front of Dagon and Dagon's house, you know. <laughs> and it's so funny. This, it, here, here's Dagon. He's sitting up there. And then they wheel in the Ark. And here it is, the Ark sitting right here. And, uh, and they go in the next day. And Dagon's falling down on his face. Oh, Dagon, that big stone ugly fish thing, it fell down. It worshiped God, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> And, and then they, they had to prop it up. They had, oh, poor Dagon, here, let's get you back up. Wait, excuse me, this is what's going to save you from your battles? This is going to make all your wives fertile, and this is what's going to bring you rain and make the crop? This here, that you just, you just stone thing, fish thing you just sat up, that you're worshiping and you sacrificed to, that you set him up, and he, he really... And then the next day, his, his head was off, his hands were off. So his head was off. He can't think, he can't hear, he can't talk. His head's off, laying off on the other side of the room, and his hands are all broke off. He can't save, he can't help, he can't do nothing. Idolatry is when you worship what is created or what is made in place of the creator or if you put something above your worship of the creator, that's idolatry, which is really, it doesn't make a bit of sense. It really doesn't, but people do it because innate in them is the desire to worship. Now, Paul said this. He said the things that these Gentile pagans sacrifice to in worship. They call them gods. They're no gods at all. He says, actually, they're demons. The strongest 
spirit that the devil sends upon the earth, that he always has from from the time of the garden until today, and it's going to become waxing even stronger and greater and even darker, is the spirit of deception. He wants to deceive people, and what he does is he takes this little false god, and a lot of now now some things some things are just misunderstanding. Some doctrines or misunderstandings misinterpreting the scriptures, right? I'm not saying they're harmless, but somebody just didn't interpret scripture correctly, and so they've got a wrong idea and a wrong teaching. But there are some teachings and doctrines that came right out of hell that are demonic and their ex doctrines and devils that will do permanent damage and eternal damnation to the individual who embraces it. Doctrines of demons. There are some gods that people say, well, you know, it, it's just, it's a mis uh, misunderstanding. It's really, the same. it's really Jesus Christ, Jehovah God, the one true God, but they just call him a different name, maybe, or something like that. And uh, yeah, Buddha. They, they call him a different name. Those are demon God. Because God, even a misinterpretation, you're not going to misinterpret or misunderstand Jehovah God enough until well, he, he turns all his children into hateful murderers. He, he's not going to talk people into taking the, the, uh, your, your children and, and offering them, killing them and offering uh, on a fire like they used to, to uh, the Old Testament gods, Baal and the others. Um, that, that, even a misunderstanding God, that, what, what would do that? What kind of spirit would do that? Spirit of murder, demonic spirit, a lying spirit from the father of lies. So... So we have, to, we have to change our thinking and understanding of some of these other things that we're coming up and dealing with. We're not coming up against like misunderstandings. We're, we're facing demons that are trying to twist and, and, uh, and, and damn everyone. Uh, that's what we're facing, idolatry. But when we worship the one true God, Good things happen. Positive things happen. There's deliverance. There's good things that come out of that. And, and uh, God doesn't share his glory with any, anything or anyone else. So uh, to show you how low the devil will go, how low he'll go, is he come to Jesus. He said, now, uh, look here. See all this stuff here? In the world, and somehow he let him see everything in the whole wide world. He said, all these kingdoms, they're mine. They're given me. I'm going to give them to you if you'll just bow down and worship me. And that's what he really wants. He wants people to bow down and worship him. And, like, and he tried to sell this to Jesus. Jesus, mighty God, come in the flesh, right? All the fullness of God had dwelt in him, and he's trying to sell this to Jesus Christ in the, in the wilderness and temptation. He said, I'll give it to you. Wait a minute. This is my father's world. Hold on. You, <laughs> you can give me something I already own? You're kidding, right? He, he owns everything. He created everything, upholds everything by the word of his power, and then... And do you know what happens? Satan does the same thing again to people. He says, I'll give you this. I'll do this for you. You'll become this if you'll worship me. And uh, you know something? It's like, really? Excuse me. I've got a whole lot of examples where it didn't work. It backfired. You're just a liar. Get behind me. Don't have time for you. Amen? Oh, Sister Walker. I hope I'm there to see it when that one angel gets a hold of him, chains him, and puts him down in the pit 
I hope I can see that. Uh-huh. And they're going to look at, they're going to look at kind of like, kind of like, and I don't want to be negative, but uh, a few years ago when over there, they, there was this little square still, or I mean a concrete um, hole in the ground. It was probably some kind of a cistern or a storage place or cell or something. And then they went and they drug this real rough looking guy, haired over, sores on him, looked like he hadn't slept in a month, needed a bath, real scruffy looking. And uh, they drug him out and he says, uh, I am the president of Iraq. And then the world looked at him and said, is that the man? Is that the guy? Really? Saddam Hussein. Really, is that the guy? It's going to be the same thing. The same thing with Satan. The world, the, the, the scripture said, going to narrowly look on him. Said, is this the one that made the nations tremble and made so much chaos and, 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 uh, and damage in the world? It's going to be that way. We need to worship God right now. Amen? Amen? Let me see how I'm doing. on How am I doing on time? Well, I'm winding down, so I'm going to wind down. We need to worship and praise God because he is worthy. And it would be a good idea it's, to, to, um, to help us to remember what to praise him for is to keep a journal. I know some of you folks do. You've got books or collection of books or journals where that when God does something great for you, uh, be it a, a provision, a blessing, uh, an answered prayer, someone being saved, someone being healed, any kind of an answered prayer or any kind of a miracle to write it down because them, them foul birds that come like they do the seeds on the wayside They'll come and pick, 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 and they're gone. You have to have to have a defense against them birds, the predator birds that come and try to pick those experiences out of your memory. And then you come up and you don't have nothing. Well, you're going to praise the Lord. Uh, I don't know. Well, I don't think I'm, I've got enough faith here that God's going to provide for me or God's going to deliver me or God's going to heal me. I just, uh, why? Well, 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 you got, you got dementia. What's going on here? Look what all God's done for you. Well, you might need a little bit of help because a short pencil is way better than a long memory. Write it down and then get your book out and when the liar comes around and tries to, to discredit God and say he ain't gonna help you or he, he won't do it and there's no hope for you and the doctor is right, and you're going to die, all this kind of stuff, get your book out and I'll say, now look here, this is what God did. And you're not going to accuse my God, my healer, my deliverer, my Savior falsely. You're the accuser of the brethren, and, and, but you're not going to accuse my God. And I said, this is what God has done. And if he never does another thing, I'm just going to praise him for what he's already done because I'm his child and it's going to be all right. I'm going to get through this thing and I want to quote a Sister Claudette a Walker-ism and when she says, what? You going to threaten me with death? You going to threaten me with heaven? <laughs> if you kill me, then be absent in this miserable suffering body. As it, go, as it will be present with the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, if you want to open the door and let me go through, uh, then uh, have at it. But nobody's going nowhere till the man says it's time, right? Amen. He's, he's still in charge, and he, know what, he knows what's going on down here. And even if you might feel he's a thousand miles, and he's being a little, bit of qu a little quiet right now, Helping our faith, he's got a plan. He's still right there. And you just call on him and see how fast he comes. One more thing I want to say. I love stories. And I remember that, uh, I remember that story. Uh, Elijah. Shh. 
Shunem, in the land of Shunem. How many people have ever been to Shunem? Good. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Went by there, and there was a woman, and, uh, and it was on the, on the beaten path where Elijah used to go, and he'd go preaching. And uh, he would stop by there, and she would cook a meal for him, and here you go. And so finally, she talked over her husband, said, you know what? This, this is a good man, and, and, uh, and we can make things easier for him. And they love the ministry. And God bless people that support and love the ministry. God bless all those folks. You can't lose. You can't go wrong. Amen. And so she, she loved that prophet. She talked to her husband. And so, isn't it somehow sometimes the wife has to come up with the ideas and kind of push the program? Well, she did. She said, ha! My wife would sure say amen in the car going home. Well, she said, let's, let's build a room on. Let's make a dormer. And uh, for when he comes, let's, let's put a little furniture in there, put a bed a table, a chair, and a candle, and a little wash basin. Let's just make it easy for him, because they didn't have, they didn't have uh, motel sixes in those days. So they did, and every time he was passing through Shunem, he'd stop, he'd spend the night there, and be refreshed. A good instead of sleeping on a good bed, and, and out of the weather, out of the rain, away from the the beast, and a candle. He could he could read and write and and a hot meal, a cup of hot broth, and a good cup of coffee, and, and uh, praise God, donut, and amen. And uh, so finally, she built a room. They built a room. Get this. We're talking about praise. I'm going to go to Psalm. Psalm. It's in there. 22, maybe. 22. I have to, how, thou who inhabitest the praises of Israel, you've heard, and we've kind of changed, it said God inhabits the praise of his people, right? God really does. You have to build something. You have to build. Noah, make yourself an ark. You, Noah, make yourself an ark. Moses, you build me a house to inhabit. You take care of it. I'm going to make Bazalio real smart and real talented. Y'all make me a place to live in. And you make God a place to live in. You're going to be so glad. Sometimes it might seem empty. Well, that room in Shunem was empty. But one night he came there and he said, uh, what can I do for you? You know, you've been good to me. What can I do? She built him a habitation. And it was there, what can I do? You know something, my husband and I, we're childless. We're smitten with a curse and we have no children. And he said, all right, I'm gonna see what we can do about that. This time next year, you can have a little bundle in your arms. It happened. And he kept coming by, watching that little one grow up. Time. The, the sun was hot. He was out there in the field. Maybe got a sunstroke. And uh, he died. And where did she put that baby, that dead corpse? She put it in that room that he built and laid it out. And then she fetched the prophet and he came in. What can I do for you? Is everything all right? Everything's all right. It is well. Why is it well? Because I've got a room and my problem's in the room, but I did make the room. And anyway, she experienced the greatest miracle she would ever see in her life, and that's the bringing back to life, the raising from the dead, her miracle child. You cannot go wrong by praising God and building a place for him to inhabit. And thank God, let us all stand. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. We thank you, Jesus, for what you're teaching us, God, and what you have taught us about praise and worship, God. And Lord, help us to be praisers, God. Help us to be a walking worship service in Jesus' name. Bless the remainder of this service. Praise God.